Mark, to see you guys in the town in which you, you live. Uh, Maggie, uh, what do you make of the Bill Clinton, President Obama health care thing? Is this actually going to be able to get out to the people and do any of this explaining stuff as <laughs> President Obama hopes? I think to the extent that it's possible it will, but I think there is so much noise right now. You have, as we know, on the Senate floor, as you talked about, Ted Cruz is making his sort of theatrical play against it. Hillary Clinton actually stepped up today and talked about it about two hours ago. She made a very, very impassioned uh, speech at CGI during a panel uh, in defense of Obamacare and really criticized uh, Senate Republicans and House Republicans in a way we haven't really heard her do in now many, many years since she was at state. Um, so I think if there is a chance of it breaking through, it's because both Clintons are pushing it out. But no, I think ultimately there is so much noise surrounding this. People still don't understand it, and I don't think this is going to make a huge difference. Brent, I, I wonder, do you think that Ted Cruz is helping the cause of defeating Obamacare in, uh, I guess it's not really officially a filibuster because the vote is going to happen no matter what tomorrow, um, but he's going to speak until he drops. Is that helping the cause of undermining this health care bill and having it defeated or defunded, or is it, as Maggie refers to, noise? Well, one thing that happened today is the Wall Street Journal editorial page, which has taken a leading role in uh, the charge against Obamacare, uh, issued a really harsh denunciation of Ted Cruz. But what it says is that, look, we'll let him do his part. If by some miracle this succeeds in convincing the president uh, to sign something that actually undoes his central domestic policy achievement, more power to him. But it was really, really harsh, which tells us that conservatives who are staunchly opposed to Obamacare are divided over Cruz's tactics. He's alienated a lot of people. I think the best case scenario for him is that he makes some stunningly articulate case and then he maybe wins some friends in the course of that. But I think that he's just earned a lot of enemies on the right, the people who should be his strongest allies. You know what's interesting, Katrina, is of the opposition to Obamacare, and in the, in the latest CNN poll, it was from May, 54% oppose, uh, like 40, 42% support the law. But of the 54% who opposed, 16% thought that the bill wasn't liberal enough. There is this core group of, of progressives who don't like the bill because it didn't go far enough. It wasn't single payer or whatever. And, and that's hurting the president's cause to a degree. He's not communicating effectively no, with them. He has not, th this, this bill has not been communicated to the American people effectively. But the history of social reform in this country, take Social Security, for example. If something flawed is passed, yeah, sure, a lot of people would like Medicare for all or single payer. But a bill is passed and then it's built on. It's reformed. It begins to include people who are left out at the beginning, like migrant workers or African Americans in Social Security. What's so interesting to me about the Clinton-Obama meeting today, the irony that, Ob that Bill Clinton's, I'm uh, sorry, Bill Crystal's memo, you remember that memo in 1993? I don't. Which was, which was we got to kill Clinton's health care plan because if we don't, the middle class will see in government activism, in a government program, the security the economic security that they seek, and they will stick with this program. There, what you see in Ted Cruz today is fear on the floor. It's fear that if this plan is passed, it will never be repealed, and it will be, become part of the economic decency and dignity of a middle class of working people in this country. Well, I think that fear comes from the fact that I think many people actually agree with you. They saw this program as something that was kind of a Trojan horse, something that was never going to work as it was legislated, uh, that the arguments made on its behalf were frankly faulty, and that it was going to have to expand enormously, that it would have to lead to something like single payer for it to work. That was the anxiety and the sense that actually there was a lot of dishonesty in selling the law. And that's something that I actually think redounds to the benefit of Cruz and other critics of the law as well. The idea that this is a rickety structure that is going to fall apart. And now you have resistance from organized labor harshly criticizing uh, aspects of Obamacare that weaken their relative position as well. So I think that, uh, you know, this could go one of two ways. But the question is, will Republicans unite around a real alternative? And that hasn't there happened yet. There is no yet. real alternative. All we see is resistance. We see resistance. And by the way, there is this coverage of this as if it's who's up, who's down. And lives are in the balance. I mean, this is the first opportunity. Both houses of Congress have passed it. The Supreme Court has said it is constitutional. For millions of Americans to have a chance, perhaps it's flawed, but a chance to get some health care. And I think that should not be lost. Well, we're not going to settle that here. I think that there are a lot of people who are very concerned about what it's going to do to employment levels, what it's going to do to economic growth, and who believe that there are ways to increase insurance coverage that are going to be lower cost and more well, effective. I want to bring but, in Maggie yeah. for one second, which is 
Is it, I think Katrina makes a good point, which is the substance of the legislation, yeah. the substance of the law uh, is kind of fallen by the wayside right. as the likes of you and me cover the who's saying nasty things <laughs> about right. Ted Cruz yes. and what was Ted Cruz like at Harvard Law School <laughs> and, uh, and that sort of thing, playing into the weaknesses of political reporters. I don't want to blame you. No, 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 not, not, you, just, not, not, just, not just me. Not just me. Just everyone you know. No, that's right. But, but, <laughs> but I do wonder, it, it, it is uh, preventing or at least crowding out some, this is what I mean by noise when Maggie used the word noise before, it is crowding out some of the coverage of things that are not great about the bill, at least right now looking at uh, firms that are pay taking people, making them from full-time to part-time so they don't have to give them insurance, uh, other steps along those lines. There are legitimate, I mean, I understand Katrina's point, there are legitimate concerns about implementation, and this is what Rihanna's talking about. Th these are very serious, and there is a, in terms of Bill Crystal's memo, you still hear that today. When, when you begin, you know, which would be pejoratively described as an entitlement program, but any kind of a, a social uh, welfare program, it is hard, once it is in effect, to bring it back, to get people off of it. Anyone will make that point, and so this is part of what the concern is about starting it. These are real concerns. Nobody is 100% certain how this will go. Even people who support this bill will say this is not a perfect bill, but it does more good than harm. These programs are hard to reverse whether they work well or not. Correct. It's amazing when you Correct. look at the legislative history of Medicare, right. yeah. when you look yeah. at what they anticipated would cost versus what yeah. it in fact yes. cost, it's hard to imagine that people would have so blithely embraced it had they my, known the full... Right. I think yes, that, that, that's absolutely. very well taken. But I think that that's the real concern here. Are we seeing history repeat itself? And I think the concern that some conservatives have is that a scorched earth approach rather than offering a real viable alternative to Obamacare means that you're actually just going to get Obamacare rather than a real alternative. And so that's wh where Greg Republicans have failed to you. Last word very quickly. All right. To me, the fundamental showdown is one, lives are in the balance, but also it's about the role of government in our lives, creating a more fair, decent country and one with less inequality. We should be talking about expanding, not entitlements, but programs right. like Social Security, Medicare, which are social rights at a time when poverty is rising and inequality is growing. Katrina Vanden Heuvel, Rehan Salam, and Maggie Haberman, thank you so much. We didn't even have to